<laughs> Every time I bring up Robert Ori's name, I always go Ori Ori O Jungla. <laughs> I don't I don't know why. We've been doing that for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. Never gets old. He's Robert Ori Ori O Jungle Love, <laughs> Lakers analyst <laughs> for Spectrum Sportsnet. You know the game. You know the. You know that song. Oh, I do know. They used to do that in high school, and that was every time I get a dunk, they would chant that Ori Ori O. Was that from Purple Rain? That was from Purple Rain. Morris That's Day. Nice. Morris mm-hmm. Day. Morris mm-hmm. Day in the night. Uh, did you ever meet Prince? I met Prince once um, when we had the All Star Game in Minnesota. So uh, just once, it was in passing. So, yeah. But, but Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, that whole crew, Jan- uh, Janet Jackson. Now, that's one thing about the NBA; it allows you to meet some of your, you know, the stars that you grew up loving or wanting to be like. The only person I haven't met that I want to meet yet is Eddie Murphy. <laughs> well, you're in LA. Haven't you seen him in a Laker game? No, I have not. And I, and my wife has seen him at a coffee shop plenty of times, but I don't drink coffee, so I've never seen <laughs> well, him. Start drinking coffee, <laughs> and you can go meet him. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> who, aside from Eddie Murphy, who was somebody else you met along the way in the NBA where you went, damn, I'm actually talking to this person? I, I, Whitney Houston. You know, before she passed away, I, I met her, and she was so nice, and she was talking to me. And Bruce Willis. I met Bruce Willis in New York, and I grew up a big moonlighting fan. So, oh, yeah. and, and it's so funny how when those people, they meet you, they talking to you like they you, they know you and they like fans of yours. So that's always a, a big pat on the back when those guys know who you are and they love you. <laughs> okay, but when you're playing for the Lakers, mm-hmm. do you, you know, kind of take in everybody who's seated courtside? Yeah, especially like when Halle Berry came to the game. We were, all, we were all fighting to take the ball. I'm like, hey, that's my job. Go out the way. <laughs> She's like staring into the sun, though, back then. She, yeah. Yeah. A little I t- mean, it was yeah, so, so, so many people come, you know, like, um, uh, I can't um, remember the name, but she was from Days of Our Lives. And I was a big Days of Our Lives fan. And she came to a game. <laughs> she played with Marlena um, on Days of Our Lives. And I met her, and it's like, she really has a glow around her like she does on the show. <laughs> All right. How was uh, the atmosphere last night at the game? Uh, the atmosphere was great, man. You know, it, it, something about the home opener for a Laker game is always fantastic, but the buzz was really crazy. Everybody anticipating, you know, the Bronny and uh, LeBron moment when he stepped on the court. And everybody was looking at me because I predicted. I said, it's going to be in the second quarter. It's going to be with four to two minutes left. And they looked at me like, are we betting? <laughs> Are we going to bet on anything else this year? Because you knocked that right on the nail. Well, it is uh, Bet Online is uh, Roberts joining us on behalf. So uh, check out Bet Online for updated NBA title, conference, division, awards, odds, plus updated win totals and player stats. But I've said before, and I had him going in, I had him checking in at like seven minutes ago in the second quarter, but I don't know how long he stays on the the uh, NBA roster here. What do you um, think I th- happens? I think he's, it's all depending on when um, Vando gets healthy and other guys get healthy because their, their roster is stacked. You know, they're full. And there's no disrespect to him. It's just the fact that those guys are veterans. They got a little bit more, you know, they're a little better than him and he needs a little bit more season. You know, he's like, when I watch him, the one thing that I, I, I don't know if they looking at it, but his sense of urgency to get back down the court on defense it's not how it should be. It's great when he's on ball, but off the ball, he kind of he doesn't pay attention to, you know, so if someone sees that, they can hit him with some lobs. But other than that, he, you know, everybody's going to hate on him because they think that he didn't get there deservingly. But I think the kid has a lot of potential and he just needs to be, you know, seasoned a little bit more, seasoned vet. Yeah, I think, you know, get him down to the G League, let him find mm-hmm. out what he does well, let him be healthy or get healthier for an entire mm-hmm. season. And then you want to bring him up for like the, I don't know, Christmas Day game, whatever it is, you can bring him up and send mm-hmm. him back down, uh, kind of a carrot dangling out there for him. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think that's perfect. You know, if if you look at players around Lee, I think one player that he reminds me of is, is Gary Payton Jr. He's athletic like him. Mm-hmm. He's strong. And, you know, you have to find a niche. You think about it. You know, Gary Payton Jr. is not a, a, a great scorer. But he can D you up. He do he does all those things that people don't want to do, like dive on the floor, get extra rebounds, extra shots, and stuff like that. So I think he can find a niche like that. He can stay in this league for a minute. 
Well, I've mentioned, you know, focus on Dalton Connect because that's the mm-hmm. guy who's going to be in the rotation. He, yes. he could be the best shooter, deep shooter on the team already. And that's the guy who's going to help you, not Bronny. I know the novelty is there, but what do you see with Dalton Connect? You know, I, I think I've said this from day one. I thought Dalton Connect was the best player in the draft. And I, I thought when you, but the thing is, everybody wants potential. You know, for me, I'm a type of person, I want it now. And you see Dalton Connect play, he can give you something now. And I think the Lakers are going to have to find a way to put him on the court. Because if you watch, you know, you got Gabe Vincent coming in from Jackson Hayes and all these people. I'm like, yo, man, this rookie's something special. And you got to play him. You got to throw him into the fire early. And you see when he came out there, he ran plays for him. And this day. he doesn't run plays. He doesn't run plays for Gabe Vincent. He doesn't run plays for anybody else coming off that bench. So that should tell you something right there as a coach. You got to play Dalton Connect because he's 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 a shooter. You know, everybody talks about the guy the Rockets got that's a shooter, but I think Connect is a little bit better. He's Robert Ori, the Lakers analyst for Spectrum Sportsnet. Is this LeBron's last year? No. <laughs> hey, Bronny's in the league now. <laughs> he's going to try to play as many as he can with LeBron with Bronny James. So, it, it, you know, the crazy part about it, when you watch LeBron's game, it really hasn't changed in the last six years. You know, I know his. His ability to play a lot of minutes is not there, but still, though, when he's on the court, he plays with the same force. You know, that, you think about that baseline cut, and then he dunked. I'm like, dude, your head is still by the rim. In my tenth year, I could barely get my head by the nets, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm six ten. And so you got to understand, he still has a lot of bounce in him, and the love and the joy, and 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 you know, think about it. When you play sports. You come in as a, a young man and you become, you know, you have that that kid-like love for the game. He's a grown man, 40 years old. He still has that kid-like love, like as a, as a 20-year-old. So I expect him to be a, around for as long as his body lets him. Well, that's what I said when people said, oh, you know, LeBron got his son drafted. Okay, if it means LeBron continues to play and he's excited about playing, mm-hmm. then I, I don't view it as a negative. Now, Not at all. If, if Bronny's taken a roster spot away from somebody who can truly help this team, then I could see, you know, there would be some negative reaction there. But Bronny is going to be the 12th man if he's even on the roster. But if LeBron is still engaged, because these guys get bored after a while or you lose that enthusiasm, you're talking about, you know, that youthful attitude that he still has. I, don't, I can't see that's a negative if I got a guy still giving me 27, 8, and 7. Exactly. And when you talk about, you know, the top 20 players in the league, this dude has been a top 20 player in the league for 30 years, you know, so he's he's so great. And that's one of the things that, that people don't understand that the mind, when the mind goes, you know, you don't want to play anymore. For me, you know, I had a sick daughter. My kids were starting to play sports. They were starting to be active. It's like, I'm like, what do I want to play basketball? Do I want to miss, you know, parts of their lives? That don't happen with Brian. I know he has two other kids, but he has one kid he can go to work with every day. He can try to get this kid to be an elite athlete like he is. And so there's a different type of joy and a different type of love, a different type of push there that's going to keep LeBron James Sr. in this league for about maybe three to four more years. There's an award that I hate. Mm-hmm. You want to guess what it is? I hate this award. Uh, clutch player? I don't know. No. Because <laughs> it's new? <laughs> De- Defensive player of the year. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> because there was nobody more impactful last year, mm-hmm. in my opinion, than Victor Wembenyama, mm-hmm. whether he blocked your shot or he altered your shot. He could guard inside. He could guard the perimeter. He could do that on the same play where he could be inside and still be guarding the perimeter. I know yes. Rudy Gobert got it, um, but he's not the defensive player of the year. I, I don't know what people – I want to know who's voting for this defensive player of the year because when you say Rudy Gobert, like, dude, he can't even play in the playoffs. Come on, man. But I, I totally agree with you. I was just talking about this earlier with some friends. I said, you think about it. There's so many people that drive to the paint, and they's like, they looking around, and he on the bench, <laughs> and, they, and they won't shoot the ball. And that's the impact defense that he has. And, and, and people don't understand how important that is. You think about it. It hasn't been a player – not Shaq, not Dream, not Patrick Ewing, not David Robbs, not Tim Duncan, that players were scared of like that. There's nobody you look over your show, not even Manute Bow. This is the only play I've ever seen where guys are afraid to try to even challenge him. You think about when we came in the league, that was like a thing. You come in, oh, Mark Eaton, we dunking on him. 
but it didn't work out into your favorite. Nobody's challenged him at all because they're too afraid of that length and his ability to block shots. Yeah, and I, I know I pick on Rudy Gobert, but you're right. I mean, they sat him down in the postseason. <laughs> you know, they even, sat him down in the Olympics. <laughs> yes, because, like, let's just stop. It feels like if you have the most blocked shots, you're the best defensive player. And that, like, Michael Jordan could have won Defensive Player of the Year every single year if he wanted to. True. Yeah, right. you know, if, like if, with Kobe, Bruce Bowen, all these guys who can play perimeter defense. And to me, that's harder than blocking a shot. You know, and I was a shot blocker. You know, think about it. You sit back there, you wait for someone bring it to you, and, you know, they, they come in, you block the shot. You know, are you really playing defense? Yes, you're playing defense, but the guys on the perimeter, like what AD does, he can guard ones, he can guard two, he can guard five. You know, guys like, you know, Mike Bridges, Mikael Bridges, these are defenders. You know, and the, to me, Drew Holiday. You know, these are defenders. Rudy Gobert is not a defender. He's a shot blocker and is defensive player of the year. Drew Holiday, Hall of Famer? You know, I think so. I think so because this is the thing. Everybody, when you talk about the Hall of Fame, people always look at how many points do you score? Dude, basketball is not about points. You know, the stupidest thing that, you know, one of your pet peeves is defense, but mine is this two-way player because basketball is, is, is your basketball player. That means you play Offense and defense. It's, that is the stupidest term I've ever heard. And so for me, Drew Holiday can do it all, and he does what the team needs. You think about how bad the Milwaukee Bucks missed him. You think about how much the, the Celtics like, thank you for coming here because yeah. he's a game changer. He can control the offense. He puts people in the position to succeed, and that's what this game is about, helping your teammates to get to that ultimate goal of winning a championship. How did the Celtics not repeat? Uh, injuries. That's the only way they don't repeat. You know, you think about it, if Porzingis comes back healthy and he can stay on the court, that makes them that much more dangerous. And you think it, it, these guys, you know, it reminds me when, when Steph didn't win the, the uh, NBA Finals MVP. <laughs> he was pissed off and came back that next year with a vengeance. And I think, you know, looking at the first game, I know it's just the first game, but JT looked like he's coming out to oh let everybody God. know. Yeah, <laughs> He would be my pick for MVP this year. Me, me too. I, him or, or uh, SGA, because those two teams, I think, have the best records in the East and the West. And I think also when you talk about Jason, you talk about last year, he was to me, he was disrespected. He had the best record in basketball and nobody even talked about him as MVP. And if you look at the history of this game, that's one of the things you look at best records. And unless you do some incredible uh, average triple double like, uh, like like Westbrook did. And he was very disrespected, I thought, last year. Is there a big man you would take over Shaq? Uh, if I had to, it depends. You give me 2000, 2000 championship Shaq? No. But if you give me longevity, it'd probably either like Dream or Tim Duncan. You know, those two guys, and I play with them. So I I know what I'm going to get with them. I know what I'm going to get with Shaq, but that 2000 Shaq, championship Shaq, whoo, <laughs> MVP Shaq was one of the most dominant players I've ever seen in my life. Tim Duncan told me a story about Kevin Garnett that Kevin loved to talk trash. Oh, a lot of trash. <laughs> but Tim didn't talk trash at all. Tim didn't talk. <laughs> you know, I, I I got Tim to talk trash one time and it was in practice. And it was <laughs> it was before we got ready to play Utah. And and I was like, I was like, this is why booze be kicking your butt. And he's like, you can't stop me. He just went to work. I'm like, okay, Tim. I'm like, what? I said, why don't you do that to Boozer when we get in the game for Utah? You know? Wow. So, and then Pop actually started me that game and was like, talk shit to him. Excuse my language. <laughs> <laughs> and so we and we hadn't beat Utah and Utah in a minute. So we went out and won that game. And I'm looking at Tim. I said, dude, where is that fire every game? And he's like, do I need to cuss you out every game? So yeah. Is he underrated? Tim? Yeah. I, I think when you have those quiet guys like that. Like we don't show his highlight. There's no real highlight to show. They're boring. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> People want excitement. And you think about Tim. You know, the bank shot, nobody uses that. It's boring. He blocks shot. He kind of walks with his head down, you know, kind of unassuming for me. But he, he, you know, in the basketball world, when you talk about dominant bigs, we talk about him because the dude was, you know, he was spectacular. He had a, you know, he wasn't flashy. He couldn't do any spectacular dunks. He was just basic, you know, and people sometimes shy away from basic. And I think for me, it's basic gets the job done. You know, five championships later, he, he did a great job. He's one of the best big men I ever played with. You know, when you talk about top 25 of all time, you got to throw him in there because he's a winner. 
Well, he's probably banging on the top 10, I would think, with just winning five. Like, is Steph Curry in the top 10? You know, it, it it's weird because Steph is right there. It's in the, in the, And the thing about it is Steph, to me, I would put him in the top 10. But my top 10, when you look at it, probably 20 people because <laughs> yes. it, it's so many people that are equal, you know, and, and you think about it, you got guys that only get talked about like Clyde Drexler, who was great. You've got guys like Joe Dumars that was great. You got, you know, think about it. You got though Larry Bird in it. But so it's so many people that, you know, because of the athleticism, the athletes now kind of push guys down, but still, they're still great. You know, the only guy that I wouldn't put in my top 25 is Charles Bark because he went to Auburn. <laughs> Before I let you go, you have to place a bet on this team to win the West. Uh, win the West is going to be Oklahoma City Thunder. Okay. You know, I, I think if you look what they did this summer by adding A.C. Fresh and Hartenstein, you know, you always add something to If you don't win the championship, you add something to your team that you really need and that you're missing. And that's what they're missing, a big that can get up and down and play different guys and get them extra shots. But the athleticism they have, the energy and the enthusiasm and the way they love to play together, I'm betting on OKC. Great to talk to you again, Robert. Thank you. Always. Thanks for having me again. That's Robert Ori, Ori O, Jungle Love. The uh, Lakers will be hosting the Suns on Friday night. He was joining us courtesy of Bet Online. Check out Bet Online, updated NBA title odds, plus updated win totals, player stats as well.